All right, let's think now about What's the difference between a human attacker versus an attack in code? Okay? You remember a virus or a worm is code. And if it's code, it can be detected. And if we can detect it, we can block it, right? The code stays the same. All right, so the code's always the same. Once we find out what the code, the bad code is, now we've detected it, and then we can block it, okay? So this is what your antivirus software does. You know, we look at the code since the code stays the same, we just have to see what you know this certain code looks like and block it that way. So once we've detected, it's blocked forever. A human attacker is a little different. They can adapt to the situation, okay? They have a whole list of vulnerab vulnerabilities. And they can go through them all. If we write code, that's one vulnerability at a time, okay? So a human can just go through Vulnerability after vulnerability. What are you doing else here? Okay. Yeah, they'll have a good human attacker will have all of the different vulnerabilities that are possible. They're sort of common ones. And they won't they won't just write a program to execute it, that they circulate. You know, a virus they just send out and hope people touch it, or a worm the same way. The human will just keep it and they'll only use it on a certain target. So we better note that. They are only after certain people or people in a certain firm. Okay? Because you want a good target here. I mean, it's part of the watering hole idea is kind of this adaptation, but even that code is just out there and it's the same. might be a bank or a CEO, certain person, you know, you just never know. Spear phishing is an email attack targeted at one person. So here we're not having I don't know, pictures of Anna Kornikova. You guys remember that one? I can't spell it right, Kornikova something. We'll just pretend that's spelled right. So, and a virus, one of the viruses was you clicked in your email for pictures of Anna Kornikova, and lots of people did it. There was a great one that was I love you, and you'd click on it because you wanted to know why your boss loved you, and then you were infected. But down here, if they spear fish, it's to one person. So it could be things like, you know, here is that report on, I don't know, on canned corn you wanted. So they can literally, like, here is a very specific email. Yeah, it would be a very specific email tailored specifically toward this person. Yeah. Yeah, it's none of this you've won or I'm a poor prince dying with a million dollars. It's literally like, you know, here is something you wanted. That would be a lame one, but I don't know. Yeah, it would look authentic. 
That's the whole idea. So it's spear phishing. Um, the other thing they can do is on the server side. So this is one to one person. Well, I guess we know that. So on the server side, they're looking at multiple vulnerabilities and they'll just go through everything they can think and every possible thing they might think of that the servers of this company might have that they want. Okay, so that's fine. So how do we do it? Is this what they had in the video? Yeah, and then you all will just publish this and it'll be like, okay. Well, I'm going to tell you how it is. It's awesome. I'll show, I can show you this stuff. Come on, you guys are the big, the good guys. All right, stage one. This is if I'm a human, okay? So I'm right here. I want to go, I'm a human attacker, and I'm targeting certain people or a certain firm, all right? So stage one, this is when I'm casing the neighborhood, right? I want to find a vulnerable host. It's funny, for I don't know how many years I've never made my Vs with a proper venus to them okay i'll tell you the program to use i'm not going to show you how to do it though <laughs> it's called n map this is a nice one there's other ones that are more hacker friendly i guess you'd call it but n map is one that just normal people normal network administrators use what n map does is it scans a computer for open ports or scans a subnet for open ports. Okay. Now the difference here is I might just scan a whole subnet on a certain port, well, let me just note here. If I scan a computer for open ports, the open ports, I can't remember the range, it starts from 1 to about 4,000. Okay? That's how many open ports there are. And the way you find an open port is you send a SYN message on every port. Does that sound like a great idea? And it takes a little time. So normally you wouldn't even scan 4,000 ports. And in fact, Nmap, because it's designed for network administrators, will only scan sort of normal stuff. Because what a network administrator is looking for is people's computers that are running services they shouldn't be. So I might, you know, on my network, I should think there's no one running a web server on my network. And so I want to make sure no one has an open port 80, right? That makes sense, right? So here, if I scan one computer and see every open port on it, I'm going to get a sense of what programs are running. I'll put it over here. What programs? So this is what programs on one PC. If I'm scanning the subnet, I'm only going to pick a certain port or two that I'm going to look to see if they're open. Otherwise, it's going to take too long, right? Because there might be, you know, 300 computers. I'm not going to go through 4,000 open ports on 300 or 200 computers. Okay, it's going to take forever. Normally here is I'm going to see what hosts, what run whatever. I'm just putting an X there. So what hosts run what certain program? Okay, hackers are doing this too. Okay. So there's hackers out there that have literally scanned subnet after subnet on the internet looking for web servers. That's how my web server got found. Now that I'm found and on some list somewhere of a known web server, this is why people are trying to hack me. 
they're sending me these crazy web requests all the time. But this, that, and the other, okay? So again, Nmap, if you ever download it, it's really obvious. You can just, the Wikipedia entry tells you how to do it too. There's just a sl slot where you type in the host name you want and the, or the subnet. So you just put a something slash 24 and it'll scan the whole subnet. And then you can put in what port numbers you want to run. Nice and easy, okay? So I'm looking again for vulnerabilities, all right? So step two, I need to, and I'll just say, let's do this the quick way. So I found the host, well, let's see, we'll just, we'll do that as step three. Step two is going to be determine if they are vulnerable, okay? So once I know, for example, what programs they're running, if I'm attacking a particular computer, I'll go through that list and find one of those programs that's vulnerable. If I scan a subnet, for example, and find who's running web servers, I'm gonna go through that list and find which computers are running which particular vulnerable web server software. And then I exploit it. And then what I need to do, and I already used my pwned, this is if you want to own something, that means you need complete control and it's also hidden, okay? And I don't have my back, way back when slide. Remember we talked about it used to be people that were just trying to get attention. And so they used to be like, they would own your web server and then they'd replace the front page with some crazy page. Hey, you're owned by the Syrian army. What are those people called? The Syrian electronic army? So that's what they do. Someone that's trying to get money out of you or money out of other people, they need to be hidden. And so we tol I told you earlier also, they might put some nasty picture on your web page that users coming by will download and then they will be owned also. So they'll do stuff like that. But they want to be hidden, okay? The hidden part here is, oh, let's just note here. So what we need is what's called super user access. If you're on a Unix computer that is a Mac or a Linux, that's the user called root on a Microsoft. It's the administrator. Ah, I didn't spell it all the way out. Anyway, it's the full name administrator. You want that user, that type of access. And once you have that type of access, you can do anything. Okay, you can run any code you want, you can delete files, you can do whatever you want. So that's when you're owned, okay?